Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And our topic for this week is about opening embroidery designs and a little bit about saving them. And we'll even talk a little bit about the cool new density optimizer tool that we got with our new update in the latest update to the Floriani software. And so let's go ahead and get started and notice that I've just um, sort of started up the software and I still have the Floriani Today page on my screen. And when I close that, it will open up, uh, you know, an empty workspace and it's called Design One. And now if I immediately um, go to my library on the side or your browser, and this is one of my favorite ways to, you know, look for embroidery designs is to use the yellow tabs on the side to see the designs that are inside of them. And so if I go to my browser, for example, and I look for a folder where I know I have embroidery designs, and then I click on that designs tab, it flies open and it brings up, you know, these embroidery designs. And these are all in the PES embroidery format you know they're stitch designs right like you bought them a disc or something well <clears throat> so i'm scrolling through and looking at the designs and if i find a design that i want to open i simply click and drag to bring it on my workspace and if there was more designs you wanted to put into your layout you could go back and you know get all the different kind of treats that you wanted to um, and each one comes in kind of grouped together like that see so how, when i click on the sort of um what is that again? Cupcake and a donut. And when I click on the donut, it selects it. And when I click on the cupcake, it becomes selected. Now, I wanted to point out that one thing that changed in the latest update is that these designs did not automatically get converted into outlines. In, in previous versions of the software, they would have. And so notice if I look at the colors of this cupcake that they simply say stitches, they were simply opened, the PES file has been opened, but not necessarily um, you know, the magical convert to outlines that we all love to do. And you can still do that. It just gives you the option to not do it. So the change that we made was now when you bring in the designs by clicking and dragging to put them onto your workspace, they're not automatically converted into stitches. Um, you know, shapes. Now, if you want them to be converted into shapes, just click on to the design and right click. And you have the option to convert to outlines here in your right click menu. So there's right um, convert to outlines and there's convert to outlines advanced. And I often show how um, you can, you know, use this to improve the results. So if I quickly do convert to outlines first, the software kind of does the you know, the most detail. So if I look at that color pink, you're going to see the run stitch. Well, that's really the original underlay, but the software doesn't know it's underlay. It just knows that it's a forward, forward, forward kind of stitching, and it's called it a run stitch, right? And then it sees a fill stitch, but then some more run stitch, and then more fill stitch. And the reason all that happened was because the original design kind of the pink color finished here. And so you know, the software makes these shapes based upon a pattern in the stitching. And when it sees a change in the pattern, it goes ahead and makes a new shape. And I mean, it's great that it's done that because now we can take all of those shapes and make them bigger and the software will generate new stitches, right? And we can see that um, our stitch count would be going up as we look now, it's 5889. And if I make it larger, it's going up to 6000 now, you know, but if I click on the cherries, and I enlarge them, the stitch count didn't change. So when you change the size of stitches, and they aren't converted to outlines, it really just scales those stitches a little bigger. And sometimes that's all you want. Because remember, sometimes you just want to make the design um, a little less dense. And maybe the easiest way to do that is to select the original stitches, not change the stitch count, but make it 10% larger, you know, and that would make, in essence, 10% less density. Um, and then because the new tool, just know that the new tool is right here, the density optimizer, but the density optimizer will require the design to be converted into outlines. So it doesn't, 
optimize you know the the whole concept of raw stitch data when it says stitches here is that the software won't change it but if you were to select this whole little cupcake design then you could use your density optimizer to, to make it less or more stitches so notice there's 6,000 stitches in our total design right now not just the cupcake but like the, these two parts but if we look at the bottom right down here below the color bar it says that there's 43 segments in this design but 37 are selected okay so we have and in our selection there's 2,283 stitches so really right now what I have selected is the 2,283 and if you come in here and just say to make it all 90% so that'll be like 10% less and say okay now that selection is 2,063. So you can see how the new tool works once you've converted to outlines. And I just wanted to point out the small difference because in the past, when you came to the browser, if you use the browser and you click on a folder and then you browse that folder and you bring the design onto the workspace, in previous builds, they would have automatically been converted into outlines. So there's a small change in the software that's worth knowing about because now you can select um, all of this hot dog and convert it into outlines or maybe you just want to change the density of the fill and leave all the rest of it maybe just the brown part so you could click that one brown color and then right click and say convert to outlines and so then you only converted the one color into outlines wherever that color was down here and the rest of the design is still left in its kind of original sort of raw stitches and is unchangeable so therefore if i select this design and want to use the density optimizer it's only going to affect the brown bun but not the kind of red hot dog okay so all that said we could also look at the advanced option because um with the here let's hit undo because I did a couple things so let me undo back till when the cupcake is still untouched so not quite yet undo maybe one more time no still one more there so see how the cupcake all says stitches again so this time when we right click and do the convert outlines i always like to show the difference between the regular and the advanced because remember when i showed you the pink color for this and it was like four or five pieces well the advanced gives a little benefit because i can have the software remove the underlay you know and then we can put our own on you know if we wanted to change the kind of stitching there this would be what we would do so we could say aggressively remove all of the underlay and check here to merge the fills so now it does the sort of process again but this time when we look at the color pink notice that it's just made one piece of embroidery one shape and called it a fill it doesn't currently have any underlay stitches but now we could use our own underlay settings and add our own contour plus perpendicular and say apply and boom now you've made your own underlay so that's um always an interesting part and we can definitely learn more about converting stitches to outlines um, but in this video um, I also wanted to talk a little bit more about opening and saving because another small change so when remember at the beginning I said that we were on a workspace called design one well it's really never been saved you know although we're opening designs and adding them to this workspace um, we've never saved anything and so it's really not it just has the name design one but it doesn't know where it hasn't actually been physically saved to our computer yet and so if we click on the save button or if we click on the file drop down menu and choose save or save as it's going to open up a window to say where do you want to save it you know and choose a location so we'll call it design one waf and just save it to my desktop but you can point this you know to any folder of your computer and save designs wherever you want to and once i've done that notice now that the name says design1.waf and that's kind of an important thing to know that you know it'll be easy for you to reopen it later um i don't know if you've ever noticed in the file drop down menu there is um recently opened files 
And so once you open a file and give it a name, you'll be able to open it again easily just by coming back to it on your list and opening it up. So it kind of remembers the last three or four things that you um, have you know, saved basically with the program or open. Um, so notice that I just opened a design that wasn't a WAF, but I opened it using the open option, right? If you click on the open option and you browse to the different folders of your computer and you find your embroidery designs, when you click on one and you choose open, notice that at the top of the screen, the tab says the name of the design, ec01donut.pes. So that's what we opened and it is that's different than when you click on for example new because you've started a new design with no name and then when you go to your browser on the right hand side and you go to that exact same folder and you find that exact same um donut and you open it up it's just called design two so because we didn't actually open this design we added it to a workspace that we had already opened. And that's the one thing I think that is a little bit different about when you click on the open button and you browse to a folder, you actually open the file that's already been saved. It has a name, it has a location, and the software knows where that is. Now, if I click on um, save as, And I noticed that it's not remembering where that file came from. And so that is something that we will get corrected because it should, um, you know, once I've opened it, it should, if I click save, you know, remember kind of where it was, which was in this folder here. But see, I could put it wherever I want. I'll save it to my desktop. So I've taken that design that was a PES and I'm going to save it as a Floriani WAF. So I'll click save and notice that up at the top the design name now becomes the WAF and the WAF is kind of the the default format I don't know if that's the right way to say it but um, just as an example if I um, create a new workspace and it's called design three and it has no like I said it hasn't been saved yet so it doesn't have a location the software doesn't know where it belongs and if I open up a piece of artwork and perhaps fill it in with thread and maybe even copy and paste it and make a border kind of stitch around it something like that and um, so we've created a little embroidery design and if I choose to go file and save or save as it asks me where I want to save it and so I'll save it to my desktop and call it design 3 now when you want to embroider that design your embroidery machine does not read the WAF format and so you need to make a PES or a Jeff or a VP3 or whatever format that you use and I know there's lots of great formats that people use and of course we can save any of them but to make that other format I need to say file and save as and when I choose save as of course I can choose any format I want to save it to and so for example if I save it to the you know JEF format and then um, you know save it to my desktop normally if I was taking it to my embroidery machine I would insert like a USB into my computer and save it onto like an external hard drive a little disk you know to take it to the machine um, but you can save that format anywhere you want and so I'll save it as design 3 also on the desktop kind of right beside the WAF file and click save and so notice that on the top of my workspace it's still called design 3 WAF and so the point there is, um, even though I went file and save as Jeff, it still calls it and remembers it as the WAF file. And so, um, you know, that said, if we look on my desktop, there will be a file that's called design three Jeff right beside the file called design three WAF. I just wanted to point out that in the latest update, when you save the extension like 
PES or JAF or, you know, whatever stitch format that you use, that it won't be sort of changing the original name. You're meant to save the WAF. It's really the kind of most important format. And if you have questions about any of this, don't be afraid to, you know, send in a support ticket or send in an email. We are happy to help you. But um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoy the density optimizer. Just remember, you have to do stitches to outlines before you can use it. Um, but all of the great new um, tools and the latest update, if you haven't heard, there's an update to the Floriani software. Please visit the RNK Software Club website. Go to the Floriani um, page and, and do what's new and check the page that tells you about all the new features in the update. Um, Anyway, you guys, I want to say thank you very much for listening today and have a wonderful and happy new year. Until next week, um, happy holidays, happy new year. And uh, on behalf of everybody at RNK Distributing, um, we wish you all the best in 2023. So until then, have a great day and bye for now.